These are seven beginner game dev mistakes to avoid. Number one is not scaling your UI properly. And by this, I mean making sure that your UI appears the same, or at least relatively the same, over different device sizes. This is especially important, of course, if you're on mobile, because there are way more device sizes there. But even on PC, if your user happens to have a different aspect ratio or screen resolution, this can make a huge difference. Set your anchor points properly setting pivot points for your different UI elements, making good use of horizontal and vertical layout groups, content size fitters. These can all go a really long way into making sure that your UI behaves properly no matter what device size your user is playing on. Number two is not doing live device testing. Uh, this is probably easily one of the biggest mistakes that I personally made, which was waiting until a game was complete before I even attempted to put it on a phone or on a, on a desktop computer and then realizing that like half the game didn't work. Uh, this was especially true in some of my early Android games uh, and especially on mobile devices, there are far more things that can go wrong because now you're relying on touching the screen as opposed to using a mouse on the computer, which even when you're using a mouse, some of the things in Unity don't translate properly. So you can very easily find that things are broken. But even on PC, issues can persist. On my current game, Zombie Barrel Blast, the first time I did a live build on PC, I found about half the game wasn't working. And it took me a bit, but I did realize that this had to do with using if conditional statements. And I don't mean regular if statements, but the ones that are prefaced with a hashtag, which prevents certain code from running on a platform. And certain code just wasn't executing on my Windows desktop build. Number three, and this one is more straightforward, is not writing super long scripts that are difficult to maintain. So an easy example of this is instead of writing a player script, which is 2000 lines of code, write a player movement script, which handles the player movement, a player rotation script, a player jump script, etc., etc. You get the point. Number four on a similar note is not writing super long methods. Consider refactoring that code to a similar method with its own unique name. So it's really easy to identify what this block of code does. And on that note, if you find yourself writing the same lines of code more than once, it may be time to reconsider refactoring that code into its own method as well. Not only does this help to make your code more readable, but it also helps keep it more error free. Because now, if you have to go and make any adjustments to that code, you're only going to do it in one place. This is called polymorphism, and it's one of the fundamental concepts of object-oriented programming. Number five is just not using static classes in your game. If you haven't used a static class, it's a very handy tool because the static class does not have to live on any game object. It just lives in your project folders and it can be accessed from outside. It's a great place to put common functionality that might be needed in multiple parts of your game. So for instance, one of the things that I always struggle with remembering how to do is how to get the length of any specific animation that's playing. So what I do is I have a static class that I can just feed an animator, feed an animation state name, and it spits out back to me the length of that animation. And then I don't have to remember how to code that every single time because I can just access that particular class from anywhere in my project whenever I need it and it's common functionality for multiple parts of the game. Number six is not using scriptable objects. Again, a very easy mistake to make as a beginner programmer. And if you don't know what these are, these are worth a tutorial all on them all on their own. But essentially they're a data container and just like a static class, they live in your project files. They don't necessarily live on a single game object. A great use of this is for passing data around between scenes. I remember in one of my early Android games, the entire game scene eventually would stop working if you tried to run the game right from the game scene because I was initializing all of my data from the splash screen and then passing it through to the menu and then to the level select and to the game screen. Whereas this could have just been avoided by putting all of my data in a scriptable object and then loading it whenever I needed it, whether that was in the menu or in the game scene. They have far more functionality than this as well, but it's definitely a concept that's worth learning about because it's a 
huge, huge resource. And finally, number seven is plainly not reinventing the wheel. There's a lot of great plugins out there that will save you tons of time. Two of my favorites that I make sure to include in every Unity project is Dootween Animations, which is a great way to write animations in code. And this saves you time from having to create animators for every simple single little animation you want to do in your game. You can just use the Dootween plugin and I highly recommend it. Another one I highly recommend is Cartoon FX. These are already pre-constructed, great looking particle effects. Now, while I highly recommend learning how to use Unity's particle system on your own, this is a great plugin which has some beautiful particles already pre-made for you. And what's great is that you can reverse engineer them. So if you really like a particle effect, you can take a look at how it's made and try to duplicate or replicate it yourself. There's a bunch of other great plugins out there that you can use that will help you with your own Unity game. And it's just a matter of exploring and trying to find out what is out there that already exists and can work for you. And if you have any other game dev tips or thoughts, please feel free to share them. Please feel free to check out my own game, Zombie Barrel Blast. It's coming soon and it's gonna be a great 2D platformer with Donkey Kong vibes. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. But in the meantime, if you have any other thoughts, please feel free to share them in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.